topics. Uh, first of all, uh, I have to say that I am very thankful to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I am not biologist. Uh, actually, it is my second conference in biology and my first conference uh, in biology where I am invited to give some talk. I, am, I was very surprised, but I am very thankful. And I have to say that it is a great honor for me to participate in the conference in memory of Timofey Frisovsky. Uh, I am from Sverdlovsk, now Yekaterinburg. Uh, this is a city when Timofey um, Frisovsky was living and working after uh, his release um, from the prison. And uh, he was a kind of legend. Uh, and uh, when I started my scientific activity, I had a lot of stories uh, about him. And it is one of the names which I always uh, pronounced with a huge respect. So again, I am very touched and very um, thankful to the organizers. So um, this is a brief, uh, brief uh, story about some kind of long already and big activity uh, in collaboration with many, many people. Uh, especially, I should of course mention biologists, Eugene Kunin, who is here, and Jura Wolf, uh, but also with many physicists and mathematicians all over the world. Uh, but uh, of course, half an hour is not a long story. So I will try to give just basic idea. Let me start with something uh, hopefully funny, some kind of epigraph. Uh, and this is a famous motto by Ernst Rutherford all science is either physics or stamp collection. And I can imagine that uh, Rutherford was not, an e was not an easy guy. And I can imagine that his initial uh, uh, idea was just uh, to tease and to offense uh, his colleagues. Uh, but his, uh, he was genius, even these kind of things uh, can be also considered as a kind of very uh, deep uh, statement with a lot of deep meaning. Uh, and indeed, if we will think about stamp collection, what is the most important in stamp collection? I would say in stamp collection, uh, the most important story is history. Uh, I am not a philatelist, I am not stamp collector myself, but I have friends uh, who, 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 who were very enthusiastic and I learned a lot. Uh, from them and when you study some post stamps then of course the true story is what kind of event is on this stamp and when this stamp uh, was uh, was published and who did it and so on and so forth it is all about uh, history in a sense uh, and uh, actually indeed uh, in this sense biology geology uh, other sciences can be compared with stamp collection, just in the sense that it is also all about history. If we are interested in some modern biological phenomena, uh, then we know, we believe that it is a result of billion, uh, billions of years of biological of evolution. If, if, if we uh, really wanted to understand uh, what is cats, what is mice, why cats uh, Catch mice and so on. Uh, in principle, step by step, you need to go uh, uh, for the explanation very deeply in as uh, history. And physics is completely different because in physics itself there is no history at all. Uh, all basic physical laws, as we believe, are local in space and time. And then, it's, of course, it's absolutely fundamental issue. At the same at the same time, at least most of us believe that there is nothing in biology which can contradict physical laws. Then can it be, how it can be, that <coughs> biological laws and laws in other uh, sciences, natural sciences, which uh, Rutherford would call uh, stamp collection, where history is important, how then can be related to physics, uh, which does not assume any, any uh, history. So that is, what is the physical mechanism of stamp collection? And the, of course, it immediately uh, relates to the other very important question, what is actually complexity? Uh, because uh, naively, intuitively, if we uh, consider any living matter with any inorganic matter, then we definitely see, just without any formal definitions, that life is much more complicated. This is, uh, in particular, some kind of crystal. 
um, perovskite crystal lattice, as I understand. This is a kind of Mickey Mouse cartoon of some macromolecules. Uh, and this is a kind of uh, maybe not so Mickey Mouse, but still uh, some simplified uh, cartoon of, on what happens in uh, biological cells. And indeed, you see that the level of complexity, the level of non triviality, if you wish, uh, in structural sense grows when you go from physics uh, to biology. And uh, uh, Schrodinger in his famous book, What is uh, Physics, uh, sorry, What is Life from the Point of View of Physicist, um, uh, called life substance uh, is an aperiodic crystal. Uh, but uh, aperiodic crystal is a bit uh, too simple formulation, but in a sense, it is in the right direction. But uh, at the same time, if we are interested in complexity, then we can say that maybe, look, uh, before trying to solve the problem of biological complexity, you physicists uh, could try to, to say something about complexity in your own uh, science and indeed in inorganic world. Uh, we have some patterns, some pictures, which again, intuitively, I would uh, describe as complex uh, pictures. Very, very different origin. This is striped domains in ferromagnetic scene films. This is what we, I will discuss in a bit more detail uh, in my talk. This is just a picture which I made myself uh, uh, just uh, at one of these Dutch, uh, Dutch islands, just stripes on a beach. Uh, in tight zone, you clearly see some pattern. Uh, this is uh, some kind of mesostructures in uh, metallurgy in steel, so-called perlitic structure, which is extremely important for practical applications uh, of steel. Uh, in all these cases, we have something definitely much more complicated than just uh, standard crystal lattice. And then maybe as a first step, we would need to try to say something about complexity in, uh, in organic world. And then very briefly, uh, I will tell you about very few approaches. Uh, uh, first, uh, to explain complexity and then to characterize complexity. I will not tell almost anything about biology. I will consider structural complexity in an organic world from magnetic uh, patterns to say some art objects. And uh, my uh, main point uh, will be to emphasize the role of frustration, the role of uh, competing interaction, uh, which uh, is the main prerequisite of complexity in physics and chemistry. And uh, together with Eugen Kunin and Jura Wolf, uh, we formulated a hypothesis that in some sense, it is also the main prerequisite of uh, biological complexity. But uh, if we will try to discuss complexity, we will immediately face with the same uh, problem uh, as in this famous uh, motto of one of uh, American judges about pornography. So uh, when I see it, I uh, know it. When I see it, I recognize it. But at the same time, it's extremely difficult uh, to give formal uh, definition of what is pornography. And it's uh, equally or more uh, difficult to give formal definition of what is complexity. In uh, some recent review by Lloyd, uh, he mentioned 40 uh, different definitions of complexity. Uh, and the list is, uh, it is emphasized in the title and not uh, exhaustive, uh, but definitely if you have 40 definitions of something, it simply means that you do not need uh, proper definitions. Uh, so it's impossible to discuss all of these definitions, uh, but at least uh, roughly uh, most of these definitions are built with so-called computational or descriptive complexity, but I will be mostly talking about the uh, different approaches when we were trying to uh, discuss effective or physical or structural complexity. Uh, a prototype uh, story for computational and descriptive complexity is so-called Kolmogorov complexity, actually uh, three authors, but uh, for simplicity, I will call it Kolmogorov as it is usually done. Uh, that complexity is the length of the shortest description of the object. So the object can be very complicated. Uh, it can be some long uh, sequence of symbols, but if the uh, symbols are repeating, then instruction very, sim very simple, something like zero, one, repeat million times. Then this object is uh, simple. And uh, of course, it's a kind of basis, but uh, on this basis, people suggest 
uh, more definitions in particular in quantum complexity, uh, the number of quantum gates, uh, which you need uh, to pass from some initial state to the desired state, which also plays some uh, role of uh, instruction. And of course, it is very practically important uh, in informatics. Uh, for instance, uh, length of instruction required uh, to compress uh, file. So a file can be, be very big, but it can be compressed to relatively uh, small size of files, and this file is simple. But of course, uh, this uh, complexity, uh, taking literally this definition is very bad, uh, because uh, the less regularity uh, is in the object, the higher is complexity, uh, because uh, random or irregular sequence in some sense by definition uh, cannot be described uh, by following any rule. You really uh, need to describe it point by point and you cannot compress. Uh, on the other hand, definitely it is not what uh, we intuitively uh, consider as complexity. This is a kind of some uh, pictures made by white noise by some random number generators and this is uh, of course, very bad, uh, a bad copy, but nevertheless, one of the most beautiful uh, and famous pictures in the history of painting, view of Delft, uh, Vermeer, and intuitively, even this poor copy looks like something much more complicated than this uh, strange image, but nevertheless, the number of pixels is equally more or less equal, and uh, actually here it is a bit smaller. So uh, just the length of instruction, the size of the file, um, which you need to describe the object is probably not a good definition. And uh, it, it becomes especially clear when you go to biology because intuitively, okay, we can say what is, uh, what is instruction for the biological objects. It is uh, just genome. Then you can say, aha, then probably biological, uh, entities, biological beings, are more complex if they have longer genome. But uh, again, it can be true in some sense, but at least uh, uh, it is not what corresponds to our intuitive definition of complexity, uh, because we human, at least some of us, have ambitions to believe that we are more complex than some grass, but nevertheless, if you stupidly just count the number of uh, nucleotide uh, pairs in our DNA and DNA of this plant, uh, then uh, comparison will be not, uh, uh, not uh, in favor of uh, humans. So probably again, the size of uh, genome, size of instruction, uh, it is not about complexity. I do not uh, have time uh, to develop this uh, further, but there were many approaches uh, uh, to explain and to treat complexity from the point of view of uh, uh, physics. And one of the most popular is related with the name of Per Buck and his collaborators, uh, who claim that complexity is criticality, self organized criticality. Uh, uh, and uh, I Frankly speaking, I do not, uh, I would not agree with this definition because again, if you look at biological complexity, what you really see is that when you consider uh, the same object with different magnification at different scales, you have dramatically different pictures. They are not self-similar. At the same time, self-similar uh, systems are by definition, uh, uh, Self-similar systems are by definition the same uh, at different scales. So again, it is not about complexity or at least about biological complexity. But nevertheless, funnily enough, there is some, uh, there is some, uh, there is some connection between criticality and complexity, but I think not so simple that just identify them. Uh, I need to, to say a few words about so-called holographic complexity. Um, actually, uh, uh, holography is just uh, some uh, new method in quantum field theory, in uh, uh, quantum many body theory, which uh, establish some deep form of relation between classical gravity, uh, classical uh, Einstein general uh, relativity theory, and some quantum objects. Definitely, there is absolutely no time uh, to discuss this, but what is very important uh, that in holography, uh, it is very rare case in physics when you go beyond this pornographic uh, definition of complexity, when I see it, I know it, and when you can make some formal definitions. And there are even two such formal definitions, uh, both suggested by Susskind and co-workers, so-called complexity as volume and complexity as action. And uh, quite recently, we consider the following problem. 
system. So suppose you start with some kind of self-similar uh, system, critical, um, the conformal field theory, which has this uh, uh, property which Bach identifies with complexity. It is self-similar, it is critical. And then what we consider, we consider local quench. So you hit the system, you push a lot of energy into the system. It creates some waste propagating in the system, and then it will create some pattern, uh, and then you can calculate complexity of these patterns. Uh, and you can use both of these definitions, complexity as volume uh, and uh, complexity as action. And you find that it is a kind of good definitions, uh, in particular, that complexity, uh, uh, this complexity, complexity is, is, is volume, it does not grow with entropy because, as I said, naive uh, Kolmogorov definition means the more disordered system, the larger the entropy is, the larger is complexity. But here it is not, here it is better, you have some intermediate, then probably it's a good definition. And uh, funnily enough, uh, you can prove in this model that local quench produce the maximally possible increase in complexity. So in a sense, it means that uh, criticality itself is not complexity, but if you hit system in the criticality, self-similar, then it will produce uh, some complexity, uh, some complexity with a huge rate. And who knows, maybe it is related in some way to this heat, which is shown on this uh, picture. Uh, which every, every, everybody knows. But the problem is that holographic complexity, of course, is very special thing, very technically demanding, and also applicable to very, uh, very narrow class of systems. And we are interested in maybe more uh, real uh, systems, and we need maybe better definition of complexity, which would be more general. And again, as a physicist, I prefer to start something what I understand uh, uh, and uh, just magnetic patterns. So if you consider just distribution of magnetization, uh, actually black, uh, black regions means magnetization up and white regions means magnetization down. And this is a kind of some uh, several, several magnetic patterns which you observe in true magnetic fields. And actually, if you see, you really have all kinds of uh, uh, beauty, uh, beautiful pictures in different samples in different parts of the samples. Uh, definitely, these pictures are characterized by different complexity. Can we first characterize quantitatively the complexity of magnetic patterns? And then second, of course, and more ambitious, can we explain complexity? What is very good about physics that uh, you know the Hamiltonian so-called, uh, you know the mathematical background. I can write just some expression for the total energy uh, and I can check, I can solve mathematically what kind of patterns you can produce with this expression for so-called Hamiltonian, that is for the energy. Uh, and this is just the results of exact numerical simulation. And you see they are very similar. So we have Hamiltonian, we have the system. Uh, then we can study, we can study uh, different patterns, but then we need to characterize complexity. And very recently with uh, my friends and co-authors uh, from Yekaterinburg uh, and from my group in Eimichen, uh, we suggested uh, some definition, formal definition of structural complexity, which is in a sense complementary or even opposite to Bach's definition. So if Bach's, Bach claimed that complexity uh, is uh, criticality, then that is similarity, self-similarity, we try to define complexity as non uh, uh, this similarity, that we introduce some kind of coarse graining, uh, some kind of more rough description of initial object, and we will see how this rough description will be similar or dissimilar to initial description. And the more dissimilar is it, uh, the more complex is it. And so we have just formula, we can come calculate complexity, and we try to apply it to just to some uh, brick walls and to some artistic objects. Uh, the number is just complexity of these objects calculated. And I have to say that at least intuitively, it is not in contradiction with this so-called pornographic definition, right? I would say that pictures who intuitively would consider as more complicated have larger complexity. Then it's really funny uh, and very important uh, check uh, uh, whether complexity uh, is the same as entropy or not. 
And then we just did experiment with theoreticians, but it is a simple experiment. We did it. So we just put some uh, uh, ink uh, dye drop uh, in water, and we see what happens. And everybody knows what happens. It will be just uh, a solution, right? And then intuitively, of course, uh, we, uh, we believe that complexity is somewhere in between initial state and final state, but entropy grows simultaneously. But when we make this uh, high quality pictures and when we calculate our complexity, indeed, I would say that our definition of complexity is in agreement with our intuitive view. Then you can apply this complexity to real physical problems. Uh, in particular, calculating this complexity can be the way to find um, uh, phase transitions uh, uh, and related phenomena, but I do not have have time to, to explain it, but just to give you an idea. The claim is that at least we have some procedure, very simple uh, to rely on computer, uh, very simple to be realized on computer to define complexity. And we did also recently generalization of this definition to quantum systems. Now the case is explanation. And when I will come back to these magnetic patterns, I cannot give complete uh, theory. Uh, but at least I can consider some particular uh, particular kind of patterns, chaotic pattern, when you have in strong magnetic field. And then you really see, you can see it as a formula because you know the Hamiltonian, that this is a result of competing interaction, that this pattern originates from the competition of long range dipole-dipole interaction, which wants to make magnetization inhomogeneous uh, to push total magnetic moment of the whole system to zero, and so-called exchange interactions, which are much stronger, but they are short uh, range, and they want to have maximum magnetization. And as a competition, as a result of frustration, uh, you have some complicated system. And it leads us to very important consequence of self-induced glass state. Because glass state, uh, this year it was just Nobel Prize for Giorgio Parisi, who is really the father of the modern glass theory, is based on the idea of extremely complicated energy landscape. So you have minima and minima and minima, and so on and so forth. But uh, to have this kind of landscape, uh, disorder is supposed to be uh, important. Um, uh, but uh, in this couple of papers, we found that you can have this kind of landscape, you have uh, glass state without disorder, only due to frustrations, only due to competing interactions. Again, I can skip, uh, I can skip uh, some mathematics, but at least we were able to calculate some phase diagram um, for our model. And we really see that dependent on the parameters, there is some region of glass state without any disorder. Very recently, uh, this uh, concept of self-induced spin glass was confirmed by our experimental colleagues by the group of Alex Hachaturian from our university using so-called spin polarized scanning probe microscopy and elemental neodymium. You clearly see that elemental neodymium has no uh, long range order at very low temperature. You can prove that it is very clear and uh, that uh, this disorder is not related to impurity. And most importantly, you can prove directly the existence of this complicated energy landscape uh, via phenomena aging. So when you go back and forth in temperature on in magnetic field and experiment it is easier to do in magnetic field, you will never go exactly to the same minimum you will go to some neighboring minimum and then observe the structure and properties will slowly change in time. And experimental, uh, in experimental observation of this uh, definitely shows that it is, uh, it is uh, the glass state. And again, we can make also theory. We have an approach which allows us to calculate uh, magnetic interactions from the first principles for a given system. And you see that these magnetic interactions are strongly frustrated. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. And as a result, uh, uh, you can also study uh, computationally dynamics in this system. And you can really study that you have exactly the same dynamics like in prototype spin glass systems, but in prototype spin glass, you have disorder and here you do not have disorder. And aging means history, aging means memory. Of course, it is much, much, much simpler than any biological system, but at least we were able to demonstrate both experimentally and theoretically that in very simple physical systems, you can have origin of memory from 
frustrations, from frustrated interactions. Then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, with our colleagues, uh, we formulated a hypothesis uh, uh, that actually these, uh, actually these frustrations, these competing interactions uh, at different scales uh, is something which can explain from some very general view also biological complexity. It looks very simple, but nevertheless, again, I would not dare to discuss bio biological applications of this work, uh, but at least it seems that it can be, uh, it can be some uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable arguments that we know in physics that frustrations- You have five minutes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the only reason of complexity, but we can speculate and uh, we can uh, suggest uh, and we can discuss that it is in, uh, uh, it is also in biology. Actually, I am finishing. Uh, so uh, I think uh, in our uh, physics uh, uh, attempts in physics and chemistry to understand complexity, we are a kind of change of paradigm because uh, everybody probably heard about uh, Ilya Prigozhin, about synergetics, about uh, catastrophe theory, and so on. Uh, there were some development, very popular, uh, I would say, from 60s to 80s, uh, and Ilya Prigozhin even received Nobel Prize, uh, which associated complexity with properties of dynamical systems. Uh, but frankly speaking, I do not think that uh, by this way you can go far enough and definitely biological systems are too dissimilar to this uh, simple periodic patterns like in this Bernard, Bernard uh, con uh, convection cells or this uh, below of Jabotinsky chemical reaction and so on. Frankly speaking, I am not very enthusiastic about this. Wait, but now we have another way, and Giorgio Parisi, who is really the father uh, of this direction, just received Nobel Prize for the formulation for the discovery of interplay of disorder and fluctuations, uh, which leads to complexity. And by the way, our contribution is that we have shown that disorder sometimes not, is not necessary, just competing interactions is enough. And then we have different keywords like emergence, renormalization group, universality class, spin glass, broken replica symmetry, frustrations, and so on and so forth. But at least currently uh, I have, and some other people have some hope that maybe uh, following this way, we can deeply understand complexity in physics and maybe even with some interesting consequences for biology. Will it all help us or not? Who knows? And the only thing uh, which we can decide, let's think together, all physicists, biologists, discuss uh, and um, probably we will be able to understand uh, um, at, at the very end how histori historical sciences, biology can safely coexist with uh, fundamental, say, phys uh, physical laws which do not assume any uh, theory which is local. But the problem is still not solved. We are just in the very beginning, but I believe that some uh, first steps are very promising. Uh, many thanks for your attention, that's all.